Hi, it's The Wire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is August 10th, 2024. Moments ago, Virgil Ortiz was awarded the decision over Serhai Boachuk. Let's talk about that fight. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just say, I consider this to be a robbery. I thought Boachuk clearly won the fight. Uh, let's talk about the math. Let's look at the big picture. First, understand, Boachuk enters the ring as the champion between these two guys, right? It's Boachek's belt that is on the line. Now, he gets two knockdowns in the fight. Not one, but two knockdowns in the 12-round fight. One makes the round, which was relatively even until the knockdown, a 10-8. The other, okay, an argument can be made that Ortiz would have won the round but for the knockdown. Let's be charitable here to Ortiz. That's a 10, excuse me, that's a 9-8 round. 9-8. So understand, in a 12-round fight, Boachuk should have at least, at least, a three-round lead before you consider the other 10 rounds, right? At least a three-round lead before you consider the other 10 rounds, right? It's a 10-8 and a 9-8. That's clear. In my opinion, there's no argument on the Ortiz side of the ledger. So what I want to do here, and yes, I'm whining, I thought going into the last round that Ortiz needed a stoppage to win the fight. He didn't get it, right? You know here online, I feel that an opponent has to give the judges a reason to take away the champion's title. Now, what I'm going to do here is charitably ask the question in a fight where I thought it was clear, and I'm an Ortiz fan, but I thought it was clear that Boachuk was the better counterpuncher. In other words, they would get together, Ortiz would throw some big shot, Boachuk would lean a little bit and come back with hard shots. So let me ask the question here. In the comment section of this video, and really the people I trust the most in terms of analyzing fights are the subscribers here. Right? Many of you are gamblers. You're just interested in cashing tickets, knowing the truth, so you could handicap future bets. In the comment section, tell us the rounds. This fight really upsets me. Tell us the rounds where, in your opinion, Virgil Ortiz does not get hit with hard shots. Right, Ortiz would have to, just to offset the three-round advantage that Boachuk has off the two rounds with knockdowns, Ortiz would have to win seven of the other ten. Seven. Right, folks, if Ortiz is getting hit hard in several of the rounds, and I mean hit hard, right, Given that Boachuk doesn't hit the canvas, given that Ortiz is the one who has scratches on his nose, at one point he has blood coming down the side of his face, where is the clear advantage that Ortiz would need to come back in this fight? I mean, I, the fight I saw, definitely the first half of the fight, Boachek is giving as much as he's receiving. Just the first half of the fight, other than the knockdowns that he got, 
right in the fight. Just the first half of the fight should have given Boa Chuck the win. After all, he's the champion. If you're looking at a fight and you see a lot of even rounds, Ortiz is landing big shots too, right? But you see a lot of even rounds where it's photo finishes, right? The champion's landing big shots, the challenger's landing shots. Don't you think to yourself, well, I'm going to score this a 10-10. At a minimum, I haven't seen the challenger do enough for me to think that the champion is closer to losing his title. Right, you want to know how bad it was. And it's bad, folks. I'm not saying Ortiz didn't land shots, but he certainly wasn't the winner. You want to know how bad it was with three rounds left in this fight. Robert Garcia, right, you had two excellent esteemed trainers here. Manny Robles was in Boa Chuck's corner. You had Garcia in Ortiz's corner. <laughs> Robert Garcia tells his fighter, the corner tells Ortiz, you need to win these remaining rounds. Right, that's with three rounds to go. In other words, you had a highly spirited, highly competitive fight here where the champion, the guy who would keep his title on a draw, and one judge scored this a draw, right? The champion is going rough and tumble with the challenger. The challenger does not have a clear advantage. Understand, to go 7-3 in the remaining rounds would mean that as you watch the fight, you would need to think that Ortiz is winning more than two rounds for every round that Boa Chuck wins. Right, folks, that's not the fight that happened. This, simply put, is not the way to win a title. Earlier I mentioned Tyson Fury in an earlier video against Deontay Wilder and how Fury got knocked down twice in that fight. <clears throat> but understand, Fury dominated the rest of the fight. Right, that fight, and granted, the judges saw it a little bit different. The judges scored that fight a draw. But in that fight, you know, if you're a Deontay Wilder fan, you really had to ask yourself, and it was a serious question, whether, apart from the two rounds where Wilder got knockdowns, whether Wilder won another round. Right, and in that fight, Wilder left the ring with his title. Because that fight was ruled a draw. Now here, how could anyone look at the power shots landed by Boa Chuck? How could anyone look at the counterpunching shown by Boa Chuck, right? Folks, he's on his front foot at times. Ortiz has to abandon the pocket. The first knockdown, Ortiz is actually the one on his back foot, as hard as that is to believe. And the reason he goes down is because he's accustomed to being on his front foot. You could tell the back foot was a little bit awkward and difficult for him. Well, folks, he's on the back foot in several rounds here. Several. Let me just say, too, I mean, when you see a champion landing as many power shots as Boa Chuck does here. And that's outside of the two knockdowns he gets in the fight. Right? And let me just say, too, the knockdowns are a bit ridiculous because Ortiz gets hit, he's out of position, he hits the canvas. Folks, those are knockdowns. Right? A slip happens when you're not hit and you hit the canvas. Then we all say, okay, well... There's nothing there to call it a knockdown. Here, there are clear knockdowns. Ortiz gets up. He's arguing with Harvey Doc to Doc's credit. Right? Doc makes a mistake on the first knockdown. Let me just say, <laughs> that knockdown takes place, I believe, in the first round. We don't figure out until the fifth round that they've reviewed the replay and have ruled it's a knockdown. Right? 
Let me just say, Ortiz keeps trying to pretend that he wasn't knocked down. Right? Fighters need to realize that if you don't act credible, you're not going to be treated as credible. If I were a judge, and keep in mind, the first knockdown is interesting because the punch hits Ortiz in the neck. Right? And or it's, it's clear the punch lands. The second knockdown, both of Ortiz's hands hit the canvas. Right? So Ortiz is protesting, player, there's nothing to protest. You're down by either three or four rounds in a 12-round fight. So let me just say this. And I'm upset. I had money on Boa Chuck. I also had Ortiz by stoppage. And understand, with a few rounds to go in this fight, I thought, well, it's going to be one or the other. For Ortiz to win this fight, he's going to have to get a stoppage. Right? And Boa Chuck, folks, he's fighting courageously in the 12th round. There's never a round here where Boa Chuck, who does get hit with some shots, who does get stood up on occasion... But there's never a round here where Boachuk staggers halfway across the ring. And you're thinking to yourself, is Boachuk going to make it to the closing bell? There's never that round here. So let's figure something out here. In my opinion, a champion defends his title when he knocks you down in two different rounds. And then the rest of the fight's rough and tumble. Right? If, if Ortiz... <laughs> I mean, folks, the rest of the fight, because of the heavy punches landed by the champion, many of these rounds are 10-10 rounds. You can't tell me that, based on this fight, that you thought Ortiz had any sustainable momentum. This is not a Fury-Wilder situation. This is not a tale of two fights, right? Wilder knocking down Fury, and Fury, when he's upright, winning everything else. This is not that fight. Ortiz is struggling in the other 10 rounds, right? If you believe that Ortiz won six of the 10 rounds that did not have a knockdown in them, he still loses the fight because Boachuk is up by either three or four rounds just off the knockdowns. Let me talk about, too, what really hurt Ortiz. Boachuk has his hands up. He has a tight defense. So Ortiz is struggling, trying to figure out how to land on Boachuk. And Boachuk, who is throwing excellent short punches, is getting in a variety of shots, including uppercuts, including his own assortment of body shots, including heavy right hands. Right? There's no way a champ can throw this level of offense at an opponent who, at times, is on his back foot trying to rely on a jab. Right? Let me just say... I was looking at this, and I just thought, wow, it's the 10th round, right? Between the 9th and the 10th rounds. You want to know how outgunned Ortiz is? His trainer, we're talking about Bam Rodriguez's trainer. We're talking about the former trainer for people like Marcus Maidana, right? Robert Garcia, a trainer who knows what he's doing leans into the ring and as late as the 10th round in a fight where his fighter has been knocked down in two different rounds Robert Garcia has to tell him you have to throw more than one punch folks that's that's with three rounds to go in the fight that's how befuddled Ortiz is this isn't a combination puncher. This isn't Ali teeing off on some dude. Where Ali's been knocked down, but hey, he's he's up. Let's say Ali's been knocked down by Henry Cooper. But he's up and he's throwing punches and he's putting on a show otherwise. No, no, this wasn't that. This wasn't Tyson Fury. 
Could you imagine how desperate it would have been in the Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder fight if in the tenth round Fury's corner leaned over and said to him, Hey player, you need to throw more than one punch. Just the comments from the corner should tell you how desperate it was for Virgil Ortiz. Right? When when your corner says to you, Hey, you need to win this round, that's serious enough. When they tell you you need to win these last three rounds. Folks, that's beyond serious. So you're going to tell me on this fight with knockdowns in two different rounds of Virgil Ortiz, with Ortiz having to be told not to try to load up on shots because clearly his own corner, right before the 10th round, thought that strategy wasn't being effective. By the way, earlier in the fight, Garcia, and the Garcia dialogue is compelling stuff. Garcia's telling him, look, man, throw the jab. <laughs> right, his, understand what his corner wasn't telling him was, hey, player, doing well, just keep it going. Just keep it like that. No, no, they're telling him, hey, man, you need to win these last three rounds. So, of course, the announcing team says, why did you tell him that? And the response was some generic response of, he just has to. Right, folks? Well, let me just say this. I didn't think he won the last three rounds. I thought the 12th round's a toss-up, right? You can't tell me, watching that 12th round, that you thought, wow, well, Virgil Ortiz came all the way back. No, he didn't. Right, yes. I'm bitter. I would have made money if Boachuk had been uh, declared the winner, right? Because he got much better than even money odds on Boachuk. As it was, Boachuk knocks him down twice, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, folks, it's ridiculous. Let me also say this too, and this is really a pet peeve I have with boxing. I hope they question press row here. I'm guessing a healthy portion of press row had Boachuk winning this fight. How is it that you have three judges here and not one judge? Not one judge has Boachuk winning the fight, right? One judge has it a draw. The other two judges have Virgil Ortiz, 115-113. Now, here again... <laughs> The math is compelling. If Boachuk is up by three, three rounds, and you're going to give him a 115-113, do the math yourself, right? If you're going to give Ortiz 115-113, that means Ortiz digs himself out of a three-round hole and somehow finds a way to win by two rounds somehow gets a five-round swing. Folks, that's not the fight I saw. In the comment section of this YouTube video, tell us the fight you saw. Keep in mind, I've been calling Ortiz Secretariat. I've been saying that of all the people in boxing, the person I thought who would have a great chance of beating Terrence Crawford would be Virgil Ortiz. Right, folks, there's a question here, in my mind, whether Ortiz, after watching this fight, and this surprised me, even had the best jab in this fight. I thought Boachuk is killing him with the jab. Let me also say, too, in terms of clinches and stuff like that, Boachuk is a master at pushing down Luis Ortiz's head. Excuse me, uh, not Luis Ortiz, Virgil Ortiz's head. Right, he is a master. That's a skill. Right, now Harvey Doc keeps warning him, but Harvey Doc doesn't take a point away. This ending would have been more believable had Harvey Doc taken a point away. So as you were watching the fight, Boachuk is landing heavy power in every round. And then even when they're in the clinch and you're thinking to yourself, well, who's getting the best of this exchange? It's Boachuk. Because he's the one who, in the clinch, is able to kind of like push Ortiz's head down. Right? Ortiz is clearly going for a pot shot knockout. 
that he doesn't get. So what that means is even his corner thought his volume wasn't high enough to assure that he was winning the rounds. And let me just tell you, he wasn't. This is a rough and tumble fight. Both guys win a fair share of the rounds. And then the fight also has knockdowns in two different rounds by the champion. Right? I'm not buying this. Yes, I'm bitter. Okay, fine. I know I'm going to have five responses that say, Dwyer, you're just being bitter. Right? If you're one of the five guys who are going to tell me that I'm just being bitter, please tell us the rounds where Boachuk is not landing heavy power shots. Right? Not just power shots. Heavy power shots. He's standing up, Luis, uh, excuse me, uh, Virgil Ortiz. He's standing up, Ortiz. Ortiz, simply put, gets hit too many times hard in this fight for me to believe that he comes back from at least a three-point deficit. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Folks, in a fight where he drops the challenger twice and holds his own the rest of the fight, Boachuk has just had his title taken from him. Absurd. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. I would have even been satisfied, not financially, but I would have even been satisfied if they call the fight a draw. Then I'd say, okay, even that's shaky to me. But at least the champ gets to leave with his title. They didn't even do that. Absurd. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.